Hello, I'm Brad. Today I'm going to show you how I set up and break down for an oil painting. First I start with a sketch. You need a pencil. And then with your pencil, you do a sketch like this. And this is what I'm going to paint. Now I'll go sketch that on a canvas and then I'll fix it with crystal clear. Okay, now we're going to mix up the medium. So you need a mason jar, little jar, you need some cobalt dryer so your oil paint dries fairly fast, linseed oil, spirits. You're going to do half and half with the spirit, spirits and the linseed oil in your mason jar. This is your medium. This is what's going to get your paint, give your paint viscosity um, flow. A little bit of spirits. And this concoction doesn't stink either. So you can paint a long time without being fumigated. So half linseed oil, this is a lot, this, this would last a while, you don't have to do this much. And now the cobalt dryer, which is going to mix into your paint and it'll dry overnight or in two nights, if we can get it open. This stuff is dangerous, so be very careful with it. <clears throat> You're going to do about five drops of cobalt dryer. Five, six, seven. Put it in with your palette knife. That looks good. Stir it up. It should turn a uh, emerald greenish color. Seal up your cobalt dryer right away. a little. Be a little care be careful with this stuff. All right, there you go. That's the medium. That's what you're going to dip your brush in, but you're not going to clean your brush in it. So the Krylon crystal clear is on the canvas so you won't get smudging so that your paint won't get corrupted by the graphite. That's the point of that. Remember the the white of the canvas is the whitest white you'll ever get so be aware of that. You want to probably you know start out with uh, your light colors. Well you know just go forth and conquer. Got my medium, my paint, titanium white. Um, that's uh, nickel titanium that's nickel titanium white that's just got a little warmth to it. <clears throat> got alizarin crimson, some cad orange, some Indian yellow, um, some carmine, which is a rose color, cadmium red, transparent red, cadmium red light, um, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, yellow ochre light, we have burnt umber. Um, some lime green kind of color. Uh, then we have sap green, viridian green, raw umber. <clears throat> um, we have some some black. I think that's ivory black. Cobalt blue. Um, phthalo turquoise blue. And I can never remember the name of this blue. 
Um, well, anyways, you need a rainbow of colors. And this is how I keep my palette, and you just dip into that. I use some, my brushes. Since I have this size canvas, I'll be using smaller brushes. <clears throat> Mostly these are filberts, they're cheap brushes. You need some for blending, some for getting in the little tight corners and stuff. I use a mall stick. What the mall stick does, <clears throat> you can make this just out of any old dowel stick at Michael's. You can use this to balance yourself, balance your brush like this. That way you can be steady when you paint. So, first thing I'll do is get my palette wet with some medium. Dip in, get your palette wet. Now, the cobalt dryer mixed into the white <clears throat> is going to dry your paints a lot faster so you can keep working. You're going to always dip into your medium, never shake your brush in there, it's not for cleaning your brush. When you want to clean your brush, you clean it with a paper towel, like that, dip in, clean. There's a cl clean way of painting. Now say I want a, a pink for her dress, have some white, little fleck of carmine, which is like a rose color. That's where I'll get a nice pink. Say I want it to be a little more purple, I'll go into one of my blues. Pick a blue. This is thalo turquoise blue. You only need a dab of this. A little more carmine. And you get a purple. You're going to have to experiment with the colors. Always make sure it's wet. Say I want to do a flesh. Get a little more white. Little cat orange, which is kind of cheating in some circles. Start to get a nice light flesh tone. You want it a little warmer, add a little rose carmine. <clears throat> like so. Clean your brush, dip, clean like this. This is the clean way of painting. You don't have to be covered in paint to paint.
Okay, so I made some progress. I got got started blocking in some colors, you know, <clears throat> experimenting a lot with my palette. You can see where all my mixing is. You can see my medium is still clean because I don't I don't swish my brush around in it and get it all dirty. You want it to stay clean and powerful and effective. <clears throat> so, there's all my mixing. You want to get the, uh, you just want to start blocking out your first layer, you know? <clears throat> and I still obviously have to do a little more edging in. There's still some raw canvas. I like to make it so there's no holes in the, in the paint, like it's all covered with paint. Like I said, the raw canvas is good for like really super bright yellows and stuff like that. For all you <clears throat> like realists out there and fantasy illustrators, you definitely want to um, save your uh, your white, you know. But for me, this is my style, so I'm just applying paint, trying to get it colorful, impressionistic, you know, trying to find the magic and the beauty and everything. So. Now I'm going to edge in all the other little spots I haven't, and I'm going to buff out a lot, like with a dry brush. With a, just a dry, soft brush, you can start to melt everything together. And even after a little 10-15 minute break, the, the paint starts to melt kind of together, and the, the, depending on how much medium you use, and how wet your paint got, that's how much it'll melt. <clears throat> but you want to keep keep the layers. The first layer has to be fat. has to be has to be fat over lean. So you have to just start applying it and start getting the paint on there. Don't be afraid to use a lot of paint. Don't don't skimp on it. Just start going. Find the God flow, as I say, and go forth and conquer. Now I'll finish all the little edges. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna paint in all the all the edges. I got a got a nice nice little baby filbert here, so I can get in all these little corners and just block in all my color and like buff everything out. Try and get rid of all those pencil lines, you know, where you're sketching your first layer. Your first layer should just be a good base. Think of it as a base. For your second layer, like this, like grass and stuff, is just a background for whatever I put over top of it. If I decide to put blue or green or whatever color I decide to do, all this, like this red, <clears throat> I was thinking, you know, she's by a tree. Some some brushes and bush, and there's a bird, but this red, like may not end up red, it may end up brown. <clears throat> Depends on how wild I want to get with the color. So, I'm just going to edge in my first layer and then we'll let it dry and then we'll do part two. This is also where you can start using your mall stick so you can get real accurate with everything. See, I'm also, <clears throat> you can go in with the pre-existing paint, paint that's on there and kind of buff it out and just like make your shapes a little more, you make everything a little more basic so on your next layer you can get more complicated. But this is just establishing your, your shape parameters and you don't have to have tons of brush stroke. Brush stroke can come on the second, third layers. Or it could be on the first. 
That's just how I do it. Okay, now as you can see, <clears throat> I've edged in a lot more. I'm starting to feel like it's starting to become a painting now. You can see it's getting all melty. I might buff out a little more. I'm almost done with this layer. <clears throat> Let this dry and this is a good base. The painting is coming along now, so now we'll just do some last minute touches so you can see my palette <clears throat> once you start mixing your palette will be established so you can just keep adding from your piles of paint which I never scrape off the edge this edge paint like always stays wet <clears throat> I mean you don't want to waste your paint you don't want to like clean up all that paint you poured every time so you just keep adding to it and Raw oil takes a long time to, without the cobalt dryer, <clears throat> takes a long time to dry. So don't, don't throw away, scrape up all your paint. You just scrape up that, your mixing area when you're done. And we'll do that at the very end after this little session. I think I need a new paper towel by this point. Take another nice fresh brush, go back in and maybe buff a little more of this thicker paint out. Nice fresh paper towel. I think that's good for today, a good first layer. <clears throat> now I can go eat some dinner. That'll be good. And but before I do anything else, <clears throat> I have to clean this all up. So how I'll do that is with my palette knife. So we're just gonna scrape up everything on my mixing area oops <laughs> spilled a little but you get the idea so scrape it all up
Get another clean paper towel. Locate all your brushes. All the brushes you're using. That's it. There's another one. Some paint on this brush. So we got five dirty brushes. Get them wet. Your brushes are your most important thing in the world. You have to take good care of them. Now I can get my palette wet again for cleaning. These aren't expensive brushes. They're inexpensive. I got them at Jerry's Artorama. The brand is Pro Stroke. They're good. They do the job. You don't have to spend a fortune paying for sable brushes and all that. Unless you're doing like real fine portraiture and stuff like that. You wanna these are kinda coarse. <clears throat> they get the paint on and then you can go in with finer brushes on the later layers. Get some medium on the palette. Clean this up as good as you can. Whatever's left will will dry quick because of the cobalt dryer. Then you'll have a nice clean surface to start mixing on again and do your second layer. Voila! Close your medium up. Now this will start to go bad. The next layer you're probably going to add a few more drops of cobalt dryer. Always trying to get at that emerald green magic color. And now we take our brushes to the sink and clean them with soap. Okay, time to clean the brushes. I use a bar of this uh, soap you get at the art store it's for cleaning your hands, but I use it to clean the brushes and my hands. So, you want to soap them up to do this with our hands. Get these, get all that paint out. They should be already basically clean. Once the water runs clear, then your brush is clean. That's pretty good. This is the, one of the most important steps for painting, keeping these clean. You'll spend a lot of time at the sink when you do bigger paint, cleaning your brushes. That's pretty good. Now, lay these flat. By tomorrow, they'll be they'll be good as gold. Lay them flat on the counter so that the water doesn't go into the barrel. And let them go. Okay, so <clears throat> my brushes are clean. My palette knife is clean. My mixing area is nice and clean. My medium. Especially is clean. I did not swish my brush around it. I didn't dirty it up. All my paints stay wet. The more I need, the more I'll add. I used a bunch of carmine. Gotta add more of that. <clears throat> this is this is how you just keep on going. You keep on trucking. First layer is on. She looks good. 
starting to starting to get the beauty to it. Comes a long way, a few hours from a sketch to a started painting. <clears throat> this is the joy of it. Just like just like our buddy Bob Ross says, you know. So happy painting. This is the first layer. Stay tuned for the second layer. Mm -hmm.